the home of the brave. Wow. Thank you so much for that interesting rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Um, next up, we have here uh, Bo Juicy. I'll take from here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody light me up. Cold air. Hot smoke. Somebody better bring me my Jack and Coke. Leaves everywhere, turning red. I think that is really rad. Look around, it's the start of autumn, and I think autumn is really awesome. To find the answers that you seek, listen closely to the creek. Shut your mouth and it will speak. Listen to the whispers of the woods and only then will you learn the goods. Water, air, fire, and dirt. Magnets, man. How do they work? Bars that flow and rhymes that bite. Welcome to the spotlight. Hi, and welcome to the Spotlight. I'm Rylan O'Connor, and I'm joined by Jolene Valoris, App State student and contemporary dancer. Jolene, how's everything going? I'm good, how are you? Doing well. So tell me a little bit about your background in history with dance. Yeah, so I, my dance history, pretty much the entirety of it was at UNCSA, which is the University of, School of, the, University of North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem. And I really became involved there because my dad is an alum, and he was in the um, design and production program. So I really grew up there like in the theater. And my older sister also um, did dance there. So it was just natural for me to do the after school program from the age of like eight to like 13. And then I continued on and auditioned for the high school program. And I was in there for all four years of high school. I did three years of ballet and then I switched to contemporary um, for my senior year. I was originally trying to do it my junior year, but I had a surgery because of an injury, so mm. I had to push that back. But that's like generally my entire dance history. So I have like my high school degree is in contemporary dance, basically. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. So you were a UNCSA fighting pickle, mm -hmm. proudly. That's, yes. that's, that's amazing. What are some of the challenges of, of being a contemporary dancer? I think generally the challenges, especially contemporary after coming from a from like a very strict ballet world, is dealing with kind of how other dancers who have that background like criticizing your dance because it is almost it's kind of like comparing like fine fine art to abstract art, you know. Mm. So I think there's a really big difference in that. That's really interesting that you say, like, like comparing fine art to, to abstract art. Would you yeah. mind, like, elaborating on yeah, that? Yeah, like, you know, bit? when you, like, go into a museum and you see something that's just, like, something more along the lines of, like, lines, shapes, mm. stuff like that, a lot of people don't understand it. And yeah. the people who, like, don't have that same background, that same, like, art background, will tend to just dismiss it as something that's, like, stupid right and I feel like that's something really common to have to deal with in the contemporary dance world mm. even though it's like so much is like it's like a lot deeper than just like flopping around and stuff like that yeah, yeah. right right there's real uh, 
you know, real skill, real yeah. talent that, that goes into it. You say that contemporary dance is a lot like uh, abstract art, which is it's an interesting point to make. How can you, as a non-dancer, train yourself to view contemporary dance as uh, abstract art? I think what literally what the viewer has to do is just kind of like give more exposure to dance, like go out, go to like local things, go see mm -hmm. like um, when choreographers, when companies tour, like for example, I just saw um, the Complexions Contemporary Ballet Company, they just uh, did a performance at the Schaefer Center and I was like really happy to be able to see that. But it's kind of just like dance literacy too. It's like, and a lot of it has to do with dance history and like where a lot of these choreographers like came from and it all stems like back to like so many like primal things related to dance like African dance but also things that have happened like renaissance wise like ballet mm. so yeah how do you feel this community has embraced you as a dancer I know we talked a little bit before the interview and you mentioned that you're actually a ballet teacher um, for some of the kids in the, in the community would you mind talking a little bit about that yeah so I've spent some time let's Sometimes I'm a little too busy to be involved with it, but um, I have some experience with teaching some of the younger kids like in the area some ballet So I'm glad I've been able to do some outreach like that But um, also just in general like I have been like reached out for for like projects like this too mm -hmm. Like because people know that I'm da a dancer or like that. I come from that background. So yeah Jolene, thank you so much for coming out and talking to us before we go Let the people know where we can find you yeah, um, you can just find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Jolene Oris, J-O-L-E-N-E-O-R-I-S. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. My name is Melissa Weddle, and I'm Department Chair of Recreation Management and Physical Education at Appalachian State University. We offer two degree granting programs, one in Recreation Management with a focus in Outdoor Experiential Education, Recreation and Park Management, and Commercial Recreation and Tourism. Our second degree granting program in Health, Physical Education, and Coaching offers teacher certification for public schools in health and physical education. You can get a minor or certificate in coaching. We are the front porch to the Beaver College of Health Science, where our focus is on quality of life, wellness, and physical activity. We're located in the beautiful mountains of Boone, North Carolina. So come join us, check out our website, or take a class. Wait, wait, wait. So I know you're here for Statue Talks, but unfortunately that was canceled. The ratings were just way too low and uh, we got canceled. But there's good news. Getting canceled just means there's room for improvement. And like I always say, upwards and onwards. Now we're ready for Painting Talk. I think this painting is actually my favorite. You know what? I think I know why it's my favorite. You see right there? That's Price Lake. That is definitely Price Lake. And then right up, yeah, and that's gotta be Grandfather. So that means that's Howard. That's Howard's knob right there. 
Yeah, man. Isn't Boone just wonderful? I can see why the artist would paint it. I give this painting seven deers and two waterfalls out of six. What you see behind me is very clearly not a painting. Although it is a rather beautiful animal, I would give it a 10 out of 10 for those beautiful claws, but since it's not made of paint, I'm gonna have to give it a zero. Let's move on. After the rise and fall of the Golden Girls, all that remains of their legacy is this painting right here. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, Rose. Oh, wait. That's not the Golden Girls. And uh, it's also not a painting. Let's keep going. This is not a painting. This is not a painting. This one? Not a painting. This one makes me think of Mother. It's still not a painting. Now this one right here? Not a painting. Now this one, titled... 243 is maybe a bit on the nose, but I think it's still rather touching. I think somebody stole this one. No way that's a painting. Nah, no, there's, there's no way you could get a bird to sit still for that long, dude. Come on, I'm not an idiot. Blink, you son of a bird. Now this one might look like a painting, but it's not a painting. You're not gonna be, oh, I blink. Mm. A little known fact about this portrait right here, it was painted hours before FDR famously got stuck in that bathtub for a few days. Okay guys, actually, take a look at this one. This is one of my favorite pieces of art. Oh, this is the art. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I guess that's the art. Are you sure? She kind of looks like she has spaghetti on her head. You know what? Now that I think about it, I kind of respect that. That's hard. I'm gonna give it six Italians out of three. Oh, what do we have here? Not a painting. Okay, this one's trash. This one's definitely trash. This one, no, wait a second. Wait one second. You see this boy tucking his pant? That's some fine art right there. This one is not a painting. This one could be a painting, but it's not. Nah, this one's not a painting. Nope. Not a painting. Definitely not a painting. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Painting Ponderings. Ciao.
Welcome back to the Spotlight. I'm Elena Vegso, and I'm here with director of Cirque Appalachia, Athalia Whitworth. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for letting us talk with you today. Can you tell me a little bit about Cirque Appalachia and what you guys offer to the high country? So we are a circus art studio and we are primarily focused on aerial silks. Um, what we tend to offer is based mostly on um, learning and, and fitness, but even within that, we're still teaching people choreography. Um, we offer classes to adults and to kids. And uh, our kids' classes run um, on an academic year. They start in September and they run through May. And our adult classes are scheduled um, on most Saturdays and they're drop-in style. So that allows for people to come when they're able. So we have people who come on a weekly basis and then we have people that come for a season, um, but we offer aerial silks classes. And could you tell me, what do you love about aerial silks? Like, what made you fall in love with this art? Yeah, so I love aerial silks because it is, um, it just hits everything that makes humans happy. So um, it really challenges you physically. It's an exercise. It's really challenging. You're working with a fabric and you're dangling in the air. So for that to work out physically, you have to learn a lot of special wraps and that sort of thing. And so the challenge of learning how to balance yourself, learning how to move on the fabric, learning how to use the fabric for resting places just really works your mind. Um, and then it's it's an art form, and so it really hits like that creative piece of things too. So it's physically challenging, it's mentally challenging, it's artistically expressive, um, and then it's often done in a community aspect. So then it also has that beautiful social aspect of things too. Um, and the other thing that I love about aerial silks or just aerial arts in general is it never gets easy. There are things like as soon as you achieve, it's almost like there's the um, there's always another summit. There's always a higher place to reach. So um, there's just endless growth opportunity there. And I just get excited about learning and I get excited about growth. And so those are the things that I love about aerial silks because um, it's just limitless. What do you want people to know about aerial silks before they get started? Or what are some questions that you're commonly asked? Um, when you see aerial silks, or at least for me, when I saw aerial silks for the first time, it absolutely blew my mind because like, it kind of defies physics, right? You're watching somebody and they are dangling in space in the air from something that shouldn't be able to hold them. And um, so it's mesmerizing in that way and it's really inspiring. But I think um, usually if you're seeing professionals perform, they're acrobats and they're incredibly strong and they're incredibly flexible. And so it can make it seem that, that the um, aerial arts is not accessible, but um, it very much is. And especially the way that we um, teach our classes and especially the way that we start people out, uh, we really focus on the whole idea of it's a circus art. So circus is for every body. And that means however your body is at whatever point your body is in, um, you're welcome. And um, not only that, but we're going to make it um, possible for you to start where you need to start. It is inclusive. Like that is just this underlying value that you um find um, that you're welcome here. Um, so there's that piece of things of like, we don't ask to see if like, are you strong enough? Are you fit enough? Are you flexible enough? Are you um, whatever enough? Like you are enough um, to come in and start, you belong here. And that's the premise that we start with. And then I think like the other piece of it is when you think about the it as a performing arts, that is the underlying in a lot of our classes. So we will teach skills, we'll teach a series of skills, and then we often will teach students how to put them together into a routine. And whether that routine is something that we do for each other just at the end of class, whether we invite family in to watch, um, at the core of this is the underlying idea is that it is like performance. So like um, the idea of like it is part of the circus arts. Um, it is meant to be a demonstration of um, art and athleticism um, and just beauty and compassion of um, accepting your body where it is today. Thank you so much. Um, I would love to start our aerial journey if we get the crew of the spotlight on these silks today and we can even try this out for ourselves. What do you think about that? Let's do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to get on these silks. Let's go! To a 
place where you can grow. A place to be heard. And take a closer look. A place where you can crush it. And push yourself. A place to find your voice. This place rocks. And rolls. A place where you can get out. Wow! A place you'll never forget. So where is this place? Let me show you. As I speak to incoming students, I get to see the excitement they have for this next phase of their lives. For some, they are the first in their families to go to college, and others are continuing a legacy of pursuing higher education. We know the journey through college is not always easy. Research tells us that obtaining a college education can be even more challenging for our students from underrepresented backgrounds. Appalachian Advocates is an opportunity to work with a cohort of faculty and staff who are willing to help foster a welcoming campus culture. Thank you for joining us. You gotta be kidding me. All right, let's do this. Care to comment? Wonderful. Graceful elegance. He is beauty. He is grace. I'm just a little pea in a pea pod. I have a question for you. Yes. So this is called aerial silks, correct? Right? From the fact that you get in them and are in the air? Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you in the air? Well, because I had to talk to you. <laughs> JD looks like he seems to have a wedgie. Seems to be a silk right up between them cheeks. Do you have any comments on how the class is doing so far? They're fabulous. I'm You're sure about that? I am 100% sure. <laughs> you heard it here first. She's sure about that. Go ahead, get up. Go ahead. No? Listening to the teacher. Only nerds listen to their teachers. I'm, I'm quite nervous for you, I gotta be honest with you. Really? This whole upside down in the air stuff, that just doesn't seem like your vibe. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, this was kind of a spur of the moment thing, but I think I'm just gonna have to send it and see what happens. I mean, do I have insane amounts of vertigo? For sure. I love being upside down, that's why I teach silks. <laughs> really, you, so, you seem to have found the perfect career, yeah? <laughs> Noah. Care to comment? You're upside down. Uh, Breaking news. Yes, I am. It's great. I'm loving it. Uh, I feel the blood rushing to my face. Probably getting red as we speak. Love it. We can see it, yes. Uh-huh. I bet. <laughs> Joe, you're spinning. I feel like Spider-Man. <laughs> what year is it? I like your cape. Thank you. That's actually, I'm a, I'm a butterfly, so. 